I am joined by LFA 77 competitor Katie Koenig. Katie, how are things? What's up? Good. Um, nothing. Just got done cleaning my gym here and getting ready for the week. Perfect. Perfect. All right. So I do have to begin with this. I need to inform you I'm a huge 50s, 60s music fan, okay? So I was going, <laughs> I was going through your Instagram, and, I, and this is probably like several months back. I saw a picture you posted of Dion, uh, one of my favorite songs, Run Around Sue. Are you a fan of that older type of music? <laughs> actually, that's a thing that me and my daughter do. She actually um, loves older, older music. Um, I put on the Disney Channel app on Pandora, and she says, no, mama, I don't want to listen to that. And then the next song comes on, and it'll be like older music, and we just cook to it and dance to it and all that good stuff. So, yeah, for the most part. <laughs> you know, for me, it's been a dream of mine. It's been like one of my top wishes to watch a fight or walk out to some like Bobby Darren or Frank Sinatra, I was hoping you maybe be that fighter that makes that wish come true, you know? I totally can. I mean, I don't, I don't even know. Um, I haven't even thought about walkout songs yet. Oh. So that could be an option. Gotcha, gotcha. <laughs> Just something for you to keep in mind, okay? All right. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so Katie, talk to me about your beginnings in mixed martial arts. How did this whole thing kind of start for you? Um, so I actually started watching um, MMA when I was, I think, nine or 10. Um, I watched it with my dad and that was kind of like our bonding time. And then we started to go to Buffalo Wild Wings and watch every single card. I did not miss a one UFC fight in high school. It was ridiculous. And then um, there's actually a fighter named Bobby Lee. He and I actually went to high school together. I graduated with his, um, one of his older sisters. And um, he saw me at one of the um, fight nights at Buffalo Wild Wings in Monticello. And he was like, hey, like, I hear you want to fight. I'm like, eh, I don't know. I'm a huge fan. I don't, I don't really know. I'm trying to play softball in college and whatnot. And then, um, so he's like, well, we can hit some mitts or we can do something sometime. So I start training with him a couple times a week. And then he um, started football. So he's like, well, this is the gym I go to. It's called Get Some. It's with Brock Larson. And there's some uh, striking coach named Sergi Acuna right now. And it'll be a really cool time. I'm like, okay. And at that time I was an introvert. I didn't like doing things and talking to people. And I, yeah, I didn't like people at all. So I went to this gym and I loved it. Um, I think that was five, six years ago. And then um, I did it for a month. I got wrapped up with work. I worked full time as a manager at a retail store. And then I started back a year later and I didn't stop. So Bobby Lee started me here <laughs> as much as I don't want to say that. Um, but yeah, he started me. And then ever since then, I've been hooked. Brock's like a second dad to me. Like he helped me change my brakes two days ago. Um, <laughs> he saved me so many times, but uh, yeah. So I've just been hooked ever since. Yeah. So when did kind of, uh, you know, training transform into actually stepping in a cage and fighting? Was there like a specific, <laughs> specific time that you remember that this is something you actually want to do? Yeah, um, about <laughs> two weeks into training uh, jiu-jitsu, okay. I was like, hey, Brock, I want to fight. And he goes, well, there's a jiu-jitsu co tournament coming up in a month. So within like a month and a half, I was already competing in a jiu-jitsu tournament. And I took second place in that, which was super fun. And then I did another tournament like three months later, took double gold at Naga in Wisconsin. And then I was like, I think I should start striking and I want to fight. And then like four months later, I took my first fight. <laughs> That's incredible. That's incredible. Well, you know what? Yeah. So, so quickly in your career here, you're, you're already finding success. LFA 77, September 27th. Yeah. Talk to me about the process of getting this fight. Well, what did all that entail? Um, well, actually, after my last fight um, a year ago, I said I was done fighting. I was like, well, I'm really good at losing. I'm 0-4. This sucks. Um, I don't really want to do it anymore. And so I wasn't having fun training and it was like a job. I was working and going to school and all this good stuff. And I was like, um, I'm going to take a break. And then I found myself in the gym five, six days a week again. And I'm like, man, why did I say I was going to stop fighting? And so then um, I told Brock, and I was like, you know what? I'm thinking about fighting again. I'm not sure. And then one of my, my teammates fought the weekend before I got the offer. And um, I was like, oh, yeah, like, that was inspirational. It's pretty cool. And he goes, well, there's a girl who wants to fight you. He's like, if you want to cut to 115, I was weighing 148. I'm like, no, that's not happening. 
Mm-hmm. And then um, I decided if she'll fight me at 125, yeah, sure, we'll we'll fight. And he texts me later. He goes like, well, it looks like we got to fight. I'm like, ah, oh, nice. I got to fix my diet. But actually, yeah. I was actually really excited because, I mean, I was already back training. All I had to do was add in strength and conditioning and – couple other things and I was good because I'm normally here I mean, I mean I'm here right now yeah. I'm normally here five six days a week so gotcha yeah. gotcha you know LFA is a spectacular promotion I yeah. actually think we have a mutual connection uh Joey Hart you know Joey Hitman Hart yeah he's one of my teammates yeah and he's fought for LFA several times it's yeah. a phenomenal promotion I'm really excited for you it's yeah. gonna be great yeah he's awesome I love training with him he's really cool he's tall yeah. which sucks but <laughs> I actually interviewed him. His, I think, his second second fight or so, and he's really been tearing it up. It's really cool to see a fighter's progression. You know what I mean? Because yeah. he's he's improved exponentially. It's incredible. Yeah, he's gotten a lot better. He comes to jujitsu uh, multiple days a week, and he actually wears a gi now and all that good stuff. He's here at every single kickboxing class. He's sparring every single Thursday. Like, fight or not, he's here. So he's awesome. He's a really good training partner, super nice guy. Yeah, yeah. All right. So you had mentioned your record, 0 and 4, which, by the way, I've watched a majority of your fights. Uh, and one of the reasons I want to have you on the show is because I don't think your record's reflective of your skill. No, I, it's I, not. I mean, obviously, I think we both know that you're a very talented yeah. fighter. And I actually Thank watched you. your fight, of course. I watched your fight against, uh, I think her name is Alexa Kolb. And mm-hmm. I think that was a fight where you kicked her and she like flew halfway across the country, <laughs> right? Yeah. <laughs> I, yeah I honestly feel like the majority of your fights have been very very close and yeah. some of them I think that they kind of the judges have taken it away from you in my honest yeah. opinion that second fight like I I lost from a decision I didn't lose that fight um I actually went into that fight with a really bad bone bruise on my leg so which is the only kick I could use as a push kick <laughs> so that was I I give the glory to my uh bone bruise on my shin because <laughs> otherwise yeah I couldn't throw like kick for a long time I think I was no no regular kicks for three months um so I just worked on that push kick but um no I actually I don't really think I got hit much at all in that fight I didn't leave with any shiners besides a little red mark on the top of my eye um she didn't really make connection at all with me when I was on the ground and I feel like I connected more I had more significant strikes especially when I was on top because that's like my home when I'm on the ground but um I mean here's the thing is is if you leave it into the uh, the hands of somebody else like you're not it's it's my own fault so I lost every fight but talent wise I I don't think I lost every fight which is okay I just won't let that happen next time (laughs) you know the thing is and I I literally always say this but as an amateur fighter that's a time when you grow you you've taken tough fights yeah that uh, once you turn professional hopefully you do uh in the future the amateur record doesn't matter. Nobody remembers exactly. any of that. Yeah. Brock, he won't, he never gives me an easy fight. He always wants me to progress and never go backwards. So I'll never be fighting somebody that Brock is going to be like, well, this is a step down. Like the first one I fought a boxer, the second one I fought somebody out of freaking glory who trains with Megan Anderson. The third one I fought, Rachel is super freaking tough. And now a friend of mine, she's super nice. Um, and then uh, Lexi, puzzle she's super sweet and she hits hard she she hits really hard so I mean I never get an easy fight yeah well that's definitely the uh best approach uh 100 percent so your opponent you'll be facing Shannon Clark I believe she's one and one she's had both of she's been active you know 2019 two fights both for LFA talk to me a little bit about her what do you see in her game um I know that um she comes straight forward she doesn't use angles um, but I also never underestimate anybody after my first fight. Um, I mean, whatever she throws at me, I'll catch and avoid and, and working a lot of head movement and wrestling and all that good stuff. But um, yeah, I know she comes forward, but the big thing is she's super tough. She's gritty. She grinds. Like she stood in there with, um, who was her, uh, Jordan, Jordan Kazi. Yeah. She stood in there and she, like that's insane I've trained with Jordan before and I've sparred with her and she's really good and she hits hard too I mean right now I think they're in she's in um training with a bunch of other pro Amis. like she's really good and the fact that she stood in there with her is like it's a big deal but I turn with badasses every single day um I get the crap beat out of me 
by Bobby Lee and Tyler Matheson and Angel Pacheco and freaking Brock Larson. Um, I'm tougher. I'm stronger. I'm, I'm so prepared for this. It's ridiculous. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, I 100% believe that. I'm very excited for this matchup. Now, on Instagram, you did say that you had changed uh, quite a few things in your training. Mm -hmm. Without getting too specific, talk a little bit about that. Um, the main thing I I changed um, was I heart monitor train, so I heart rate train. Instead of like, oh, let's go kill myself and run super hard, uh-uh. Um, so I check my heart rate every single morning. I see if I'm able to train that day or if I'm not, if my recovery is good enough or not. Um, and then I go from there. So, um, and then I threw in um, strength and conditioning, which um, a buddy of mine named Cody Bjurman, he actually trains with Demetrius Johnson in Washington. Um, so a lot of my strength and conditioning workouts are from there, which is super cool. Like today I have a crazy workout that Demetrius does two, twice a week and that Cody does twice a week. And um, so I threw strength and conditioning in too. Um, but otherwise, like I still eat fairly similar. I mean, my last fight, I, I, um, I did what they call fasting and I killed myself. It was horrible. I felt like shit. Um, I wasn't eating the right stuff, but I had to make weight and that's what I was really stressed about. But this time I'm like actually eating food. <laughs> and um but yeah so I I just I eat better I train better I train smart um and I kind of I listen to my coaches now <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, yeah awesome awesome I actually uh, just the other day I don't know why I'm mentioning this but I'm pretty proud of myself I went to the uh, local YMCA here in St. Louis I burned yeah. 40 whole calories on the treadmill and I feel like an absolute I feel like an absolute monster is what I feel like that's awesome. That's awesome. I train at the Y here in St. Cloud too. So. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, so for you, you I, I believe you're also a student. You of course are a mother. How, how do you kind of balance all this? What is the uh, overall key for you? Um, it's day by day. Like today I woke up late. My kid didn't want to put on her clothes. She wanted to wear slippers in the rain. Uh, we were late to daycare. Um, I have class from 11 to 2.50 today. Um, so normally, like, I'll wake up, I'll get my kids to daycare, and then I'll do a workout, um, depending on the day. Um, but normally, goes workout first, class second. Um, then I'll have another workout in the afternoon, and then I go to nighttime class. Um, but... I only have one class Tuesdays and Thursdays, um, which is from 8 to 9.20, so it's super short. So it makes my days really easy because sparrings are on Thursday. Um, but, yeah, I'm a full-time student. I work part-time at the hospital here in St. Cloud, and I'm a full-time mom. But, yeah, it's crazy. Day by day really is how it is, but I just make it – like, I, I firmly believe um, whatever you care about the most, you'll make time for, um, like, important things – you will make time for. So I just make time for everything. Every minute is not wasted in my day. Like there's no naps. There's no, <laughs> there's no little pitter patter here. It's I'm going all the time. Absolutely. So, That's, that's wonderful. I'm 100% I'm certain that the hard work's going to pay off for you. Yeah. For fans who are going to be in attendance, come LFA 77, what should they expect to see from you? Craziness. Um, if it's on the feet, you'll see striking war. You'll see um angles all that good stuff if it's a grappling war i'll be on top um wherever it is um and i definitely expect to finish this time i'm not gonna stop i'm gonna get that win and we're gonna take that home and prepare for the next one but yeah perfect that's actually that's actually one thing i noticed within your game you are very well-rounded you seem just as comfortable on the feet as you do on the ground that was very impressive thank you thank you yeah, of course, of course. The floor is yours, Katie. Anyone you'd like to thank, sponsors, family, all that good stuff. Uh, yeah, and, and how can yeah. you find you on Instagram? Um, so you can find me at, uh, I think it's katiekanig.712 and Instagram. My sponsors, whew, I have quite a few this time. Um, I have Profusion of CBD here in St. Cloud. I have um, a massage therapist, her name's Fanta, she's awesome. And then um, Athletic Advantage, Cody Bierman out in Washington. He's freaking awesome. He um, gets a lot of his info from DJ and uh, another name, Derek Barron, who's super awesome. 
um, and then start BJJ. Um, and Angel Pacheco has been working mitts with me two or three times a week, taking time on his lunch break because he works full time too, and he's a pro fighter. So that's awesome. So shout out to him, Brock Larson, um, my boyfriend for putting up with me during my weight cut, Tyler Spangler. <laughs> yeah.